Montgomery Community Media presents Small Business Network, brought to you by M&T Bank. SBN is also sponsored by Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation and Leadership Montgomery. Hello and welcome to the Small Business Network, brought to you by M&T Bank. My name is Kelly Leonard. Every month we bring the business community together to network, to collaborate, and to share best practices in an effort to stimulate regional economic development. This month, an exciting topic that we'll be exploring is podcasting and really how to leverage podcasts in business to generate revenue. And I have an awesome panel joining me. We're gonna have a, a bunch of fun, so get ready. First up is Charlie Burney. Charlie is the co-founder of Podcast Village. With a catalog of 400 plus produced podcasts and live streaming videos, Charlie is enthusiastic about using content and social media to brand messages and open doors for clients. Welcome, Charlie. Thank you, Kelly. Next up is Debbie, a host of three podcasts. Debbie DeChambeau is a creative podcast designer. Her company focuses on podcasting as a sales tool, an internal communication tool, and a revenue generator. So welcome, Debbie. Thank you. And finally, we have Stephen A. Hart. He's a brand alignment strategist who guides professionals through a process to build an amazing personal brand. His podcast, trailblazers.fm, is the number one podcast that interviews today's successful black professionals. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you. awesome. So Charlie, you're first up. Oh, no. How did you get into <laughs> podcasting and then producing <laughs> podcasts for other people? Well, uh, as an as a amateur musician, I naively thought I had all the gear. So uh, I was in a co-working space called Launch Co-working in Gaithersburg, not far from here. And a friend of mine was doing PR for that co-working space. And I said, every single person in all these different suites is a different story. Mm. Why don't we do a podcast, not knowing what I was getting into? Uh, and cover each one of what they do, their elevator speech in a can, and we started to do it. And I figured out how to do it, and then I started to do it for other clients. I said, this is a great way to communicate. My first client, one of my first clients was Jeff Miller, mm. who said, I'm tired of writing a blog every week. And I said, why don't you just come in here and talk to me, and we'll create content for you. So it started very, very normally out of a, a need. Wow. So, yeah, and now, then one thing growing. that I, I picked up on, what you just said, every different person here is a different story. Yep. And so oftentimes, I think people are intimidated by podcasts. And Debbie, you and I had a convert, an email exchange yesterday, and she's like, I don't even really think people even know what podcasting is. And so is it just simply put, is it storytelling, Debbie? Like, how would you, in very, like, layman's terms, describe what podcasting is? In layman, it's basically yeah. audio. You record audio that you can listen to on your mobile device. You can listen yeah. to on the internet. You can listen to anywhere you want, doing anything that you want. But it's amazing how many people don't even know how to listen to them. Yeah. I had to show three people yesterday. I was at a, a conference for something, and I showed them how to do it on their iPhones, and they're like, oh, that's what that app is for. <laughs> they didn't even know. So a lot of it today is just educating people, yeah. but it's it's a free version of Audible. Everybody knows what Audible right. is. It's a free version version of Audible and there's topics on everything. If people can't sleep at night, there's a podcast to put you to sleep. That's the intent of it. Wow. There's a horse, a, a whole network of podcasts around horses. Horse yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's podcasts, there, the new kind of up and coming thing is audio drama where people take mm -hmm. plays and create them, put them into podcasts. Oh. And crime seems to be the big one too. Wow. So crime stories. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. On demand radio. Nice. There you go. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. So then what, Stephen, is the best way for someone to determine if podcasting is right for their business? Because it sounds like that's a no-brainer. It, right. it is right. But is right. there a best way to determine that? I think podcasting can serve just about any audience, right? There are, in Apple Podcasts alone, there are over 500,000 podcasts listed and over 100 categories of podcasts, right? So. If you believe that the audience you're trying to connect with and serve consumes podcasts, which my guess is that they are, mm -hmm. and you can craft the right kind of content, the right kind of story to serve that need, I think podcasting is a great channel for you to explore. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I'll jump in, Kelly. I think my question now, not so much is what is a podcast, because that is changing, although we are still educating many people. I think all three of us can state that that has changed in the last several years. In the newest report, the Edison, the Infinite Dial that came out a week and a half ago, shows this an enormous jump in the 12 to 24-year-old market mm -hmm. in podcast consumption, especially on Spotify. Yes. Um, but the one thing I usually say to businesses talking about, to answer your question, is not which ones are right for podcasting, but why aren't you? So there's almost no platform in any company or association or group where you can't use it on a very simple level, whether it's with a studio or with a phone, to create a message that can intrinsically connect, whether it's just audiences. We did, I'm so sorry to go on, we did a podcast for Uber. None of us will ever hear it because it's just for the drivers. Huh. So there's a million different ways to use this, whether it's me just talking to a group or a CEO who don't talk loudly enough in this environment that we live in. CEOs ought to be talking to their companies via podcasts, which is so much more expressive than print. You know, and yeah. I never thought about that. Like, I didn't, I, I'm always thinking of externally, how do we use podcasts? I think podcasts? you need to think of it in, yeah. all, in all manners of storytelling, whether you're trying to talk to your frontline staff mm -hmm. or your partners. Mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters. Now, the, the broad line appeal, the mass market, the hundreds of thousands of listeners are what we talk about commonly, mm -hmm. excuse me, but I think there's a huge market for the smaller, the niche, if you will, or just inner company podcasting. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about, because when you first started um, your first opening statement, you mentioned something about content. Mm -hmm. So, I've heard, and I've heard you previously mention something about capturing my content. Yeah. What, what do you mean by yeah. that? Well, I often talk to people, I, uh, as you guys know, I like the F1, the Zoom F1, which is a, uh, a digital recorder you clip to your belt. And when I talk about capture your content and you put one of these on a lavalier microphone, many of us speak um, publicly. Kelly, I think you speak publicly mm -hmm. quite a lot. And now you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you capturing that address that you gave to the chamber, to the Rotary Club, or to Small Business oh, Network, I and reusing that. I and see what you're even saying. if it's only a 10 second quote, this is from something I talked about last night. Why aren't you capturing your content? It's, why aren't you? And that's a great point, you know. Charlie, but I don't think even if you don't have that kind of technology, you could still use an iPhone. Well, you absolutely, absolutely you could can turn on the voice iPhone. memo on your iPhone and record capture audio right and why, there, and, and you'd be surprised yeah. how good yeah. that audio actually, the quality of that audio. So I encourage on your voice people to is. to use their phone or right. or a device. Doesn't really matter. Stephen's absolutely right to use that in a more productive fashion to sort of reuse your content more than once. I love the mindset that any company that has a website should mm -hmm. have a podcast yes. mm. because from a content perspective you transcribe the content from the podcast and now Absolutely. you have content for the website. Yes. Yeah. You have those snippets that Charlie was talking about, that's your social media content. Mm -hmm. So for from a marketing perspective when a marketing consultant is trying to say to their clients create content and the clients going, "Oh my god, what do we write about? We don't have the time, right. we don't have the bandwidth, exactly. whatever." Yeah. Just record the podcast, transcribe it, and boom, you're done. Yes. Wow. It is the best. Yeah, because I think that's part of the challenge. Like, I know that's what caused me to push off launching a podcast for so long is because we feel like, oh my gosh, it's just something else that I have to do. But what you all are saying is we probably have information that we can repurpose. It's just a matter of what does that process look like? I pretty much guarantee you, you do. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, really do, I really think so. And that's what, when we talk about storytelling now, and you guys chime in on it, right now what I talk about is behind the scenes of storytelling. Mm. So we want an intimate look into something that may be not overly produced sometimes. We want to look behind the microphone right. as much as possible in terms of podcasting. I don't know how you guys feel about that. You know the thing I'm thinking about just now too, oftentimes you look and you see someone else doing a particular topic that you thought would be interesting, don't let that be the stopping point for you because you have a way to tell your story that's unique to you, right? And no one else can share Precisely. that story in that way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you feel like, oh, it's already being done. Yeah. They don't need that. Exactly. So you don't want to over communicate information. Right. But yeah, that's so true is that we each have a unique perspective that we bring to an idea or information. Absolutely. And Kelly, this may be something that you bring up later, but I'm going to bring it up now since we're in this area. But for people who are in sales, mm -hmm. the podcast becomes a great door opener as a sales tool. Mm -hmm. I always tell companies, make a list of your top 100 prospects and go interview them. Right. And then transcribe it and there's the content for your website as well. 
Um, but it, who doesn't want to be interviewed? It's yeah. very, very few people that don't know. Today we're live streaming and we're on camera and that makes people really nervous. But getting behind a microphone, that's not an issue for most people. Yes. Right. You know? right. So, and you're appealing to their ego and now you have a better chance to get in front of them one on one. Yeah. And now you have a chance to open the door for a conversation to potentially create a business opportunity. Absolutely. That is probably the biggest benefit of podcasting for me. It's the leverage. Mm. You have the opportunity to leverage the reach of other people. I've now interviewed over 150 people all across the country. And on a weekly basis, yeah. I'm able to, to share their story. Guess what happens? Those people want to reciprocate. Yeah. They want to serve you in return. It becomes a support network. And they find ways yeah. to include you yeah. uh, in, in whatever they're doing. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So now, Debbie, let's turn the corner a bit and talk because you alluded to the sales funnel or a sales professional using podcasting. So let's talk about what are some of the ways that you see companies using podcasts to generate revenue? Okay. Well, that's one. As a, as that's probably my primary function. That's what I believe they can do the best job with. But you can be an advertiser on other people's podcasts. Mm -hmm. So it is a way to get out there. And the th cool thing about a podcast is it's not just a one and done. Um, no offense to M&T or Montgomery Leadership, but their sign is up here. People are seeing it once a month. Because it's live streaming, they might see it over and over again. But if, it, if right. this wasn't live stream, it's a one and done advertising thing. On a podcast, you advertise on a podcast, it's on all kinds of different platforms. You never know who's going to hear it, how far the reach is, and it's evergreen. Mm -hmm. It is always there. So it's not just this one event. So that's a way that you know it becomes a potential monetary piece of it. Um, I think before you, you move to the next that? part of that, I think there's one other part, and I, maybe you guys can help me with the numbers, but podcast listeners are proven to listen to the whole show yes. mm -hmm. more than the drop-off in other forms of media. So, mm -hmm. so that, still, that same part of that is part two, is that those who are listening to that tend to get consume the whole Yes. the whole episode, yeah. so to speak. And particularly Sorry. if the advertisement is done correctly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for me, it, the, gener the revenue generator is, it is your sales tool to open doors. And that's where it becomes the right. revenue generator. And I don't think a lot of organizations are looking at it from that perspective. They're just looking at it, I mean, yours is completely different. Yeah. But if you, you're the company that you're working for during the day, yeah. it could open a lot of doors for conversations for potential business opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely. So is the, so let, help me to understand, um, the opportunity or the revenue generation side, is it from, hey, I'm a podcaster, I have a podcast, let me take that content, or is it to speak or to be interviewed on a podcast, or is it both? Which, what are you alluding to? I think both. Okay. I think, think both. both. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking more closely at the, at the channel. If you are uncomfortable or not prepared to start a podcast, I have, I've seen several people successfully work the guest side of podcasting. And become a guest. Find, you know, right. begin researching podcasts that you can bring value to, mm -hmm. and find ways to to be a guest on that show. And at the end, offer up value, access to some of your products and services. I was just a guest on a. You'll know this one, Spreaker, which is a podcast hosting platform. I was just a guest on Spreaker Live on Tuesday. That was published yesterday. Um, so you know, I'm talking about business planning, and who knows who's going to listen to that? Right. But it opens right. the doors. The other side of that to add to, mm -hmm. if you start a podcast, the best way to advertise your podcast is to be a guest on other yeah. podcasts Absolutely. because you're getting in front of people who already understand what a podcast is. Yeah. Well, and if they're interested, they'll we, tune in we and have subscribe. We expression for that. Yes. What is o it? OPP. Oh. <laughs> other people's podcasts. <laughs> No, it's a it's opportunity. OPP. It's it's other people's podcasts, and that is a, for everything you just said. That's yes. a that's a proven way to promote. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you, you know, know me. <laughs> oh, not everybody's gonna get that. <laughs> one, one tip. <laughs> Woo! You down with OPP? Everyone. No. On that note, I other do OPP. Know. If I could add, I do know. if you are going to go to guest routes, do not pitch podcasters about what's in it for you. Mm, yeah. Right? So I was going to ask you that. What are, what are some of the things that you've seen, like the best practices? What are the guaranteed don't do this? Don't do it. Don't do it. Every week I receive 10 emails from people that open with, yep. I have a book. Yep. I don't care that you have a book, right? Not now. Approach me and let me know that you, know, you have something of value to add to my right. community. Right. Because our podcast is our baby. 
right? And we want to protect our community. Mm -hmm. So approach someone with a value that you can bring to their community. And then if we do research, we're going to find out about your book and we're going to share that with the world, right? So uh, take the time well to said. think of how you can bring value to that community and then you go from there. It's like you have to listen to several episodes and then yes. you have to say, I've listened to these three episodes and I noticed that you were talking about X and this is something that you're passionate about. And then that's going to get your attention to say, oh, they listened. Let me see who that is. Let me explore them. And then Isn't that's that the best thing in the world when they reach out and they say, oh, I'm a fan of your podcast and I love this episode with. Yeah, but you can't just listen to attention. one. To me, that's a little sleazy. You right. have to listen to a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. So then, um, have you guys ever had, like, do you have a war story that you can share with us in terms of um, something that someone did that it's like, yeah, ooh, you don't approach me like that. Or one where you're like, wow, that person really knocked my socks off. I really want to get them on my show. So that's part one of my question. Part two of my question is, have you reached a point in, because each of you host podcasts, have you reached a point where now it's not you trying to identify people that you're going to interview, but people are coming to you and it's like really quality people coming to you to say, oh my gosh, I want to be, I need to be on your podcast. Like, so answer those questions in whatever order you'd like to. Charlie. Well, I'm only actively doing one trade association show and they just tell me who I'm going to be interviewing. Okay. So I don't have, I don't actually produce many shows myself anymore. So it's a little different for me. Oh, anymore. Yes. Yeah, so. I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I forgot that you've arrived. I'm just standing behind going like this. No, I, I, don't know what, I don't know if I've arrived or not. But, <laughs> so they, they tell me what they want me to interview and that's, that's one way that that happens. But. You're a big LinkedIn person. I feel like I yeah. get spammed on LinkedIn all the time mm, yeah. about it, with exactly really? what you were talking about. Yeah, I've just put my book out. It's easy oh, to find me yeah. because people will do the search for podcast host, and it's like, please stop doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. So that's yeah. a, a terrible story, I, or the war story, if you will. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, um, I have not reached the level where people are reaching out to me that I want. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very yeah. selective as to whom I want because my right. podcasts are very niche right. as yeah. opposed to being very broad. So that's partly why probably, but okay. I expect that could change in a while. So then what are some of the qualities that you look for in any one of your, like what is it that you're looking for in a person when you do your research to, de to determine who you're going to be interviewing? What, what, what does that look like? What does that process look like? So one of my podcasts is the business of insurance, mm -hmm. okay? And it, the idea behind it is what it's like to work in the insurance industry. So for me, I'm not worried about who I speak with, but I'm just looking, I wanna talk to people in different professions within the industry. So that's why I say it's kind of niche and specific, if you will. Another podcast is called Divorce Exposed. So I'm looking for people who have professional information on how people can get through this process mm -hmm. um, without sort of floundering, if you will. So it, again, because they're so niche, it makes a difference as to who I bring on. Okay. Now, Stephen, before I have you ask the question, I want to start queuing up folks that are here in the audience. If you have a question, start making your way to the microphone so that we can open up the floor for questions. Magically appeared. <laughs> I just want to share this. This week, within the last week, someone reached out and said, hey, I think this woman would be a great guest for your show. Uh -huh. mm. And I said, you know, I, I now have probably five to ten people reach out on a weekly basis. Wow. Sure you do. Interested in being a guest. I only have a weekly episode, so it's a limited number of spots. So I've created a Google form mm -hmm. that people can share what value they might bring to an episode. So I sent the, the guest application and I, I pulled up the lady's profile. Well, I feature black professionals, mm -hmm. so white lady. <laughs> so I responded to the guy and said, hey, by the way, have you, you know, do you right, realize right. who uh -huh. I interview? Right. And this is a PR person. Oh, wow. You know? Oh. So that, that was a, a bad side yeah. of pitching yeah. and not even know being aware audience, of who right? you're pitching, right? Yeah. Yeah. So know, yeah. know exactly um, what podcast might be best for mm -hmm. your client if you're mm -hmm. a PR person or if you're looking to be a guest as well. <laughs> Wow, gotcha. Any questions from folks in the audience? All right, come on up. Hi, thank you so much. This is really interesting. I don't have a lot of experience with podcasts. But what I'm, I was curious if you, one of you or all of you could give an example of how you monetize a podcast, like something concrete, how it happened and how people made some money on it. 
<laughs> Thanks. You guys want to start? Yeah. I think the important thing to do, to do when we talk about monetization is keeping an open mind to how, again, I come back to audience, who are you serving, mm -hmm. right? Be very clear on who you're serving, get as much intel. If you have a podcast, begin to survey your audience and understand the demographic and psychographic details, right? What challenges your audience, what they want more of. You need that because you need that to begin to document that information to create a media kit and begin reaching out to potential advertisers for your platform, right? I personally have been sponsored for the past uh, two and a half years by a nonprofit organization um, that connects to you know what I'm doing and my audience, and it right. serves them well, and also serves us. I've also created product, um, mm -hmm. and I am my own sponsor, right? Uh, pushing traffic to my to my product as well. So those are a couple of the ways that I've been able to monetize. And if I can add to this, so I was listening to one of your podcasts where you featured Nicole Walters. Yes, and I was like, oh my gosh, her story is amazing, and she happened to mention. A, a program that she had, and I purchased that. So that's on yes. the reverse side of okay, you know, a in, someone that's being interviewed yes. and them being able to create this sales funnel Absolutely. just from people that are taking in their information. So mm -hmm. some people uh, will monetize through sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage people to start from day one and to start locally as opposed to thinking globally. I mean, mm -hmm. I think banks, if you're doing a business podcast, is a great. Um, organization yeah. to approach to be a sponsor. Um, yeah. Another thing that people are looking at is affiliate marketing, where they can sell other people's products right. and make a revenue off of that. And there's a lot of organizations that will do that today. So that's that's another way that you can monetize. And if you have products and services, the podcast mm -hmm. is the great way to sell your own products and services. You know. Right. Right. No, uh, I, I agree with what you guys have said. That the small sponsorships. And, and that's also keys to my point about how p people do listen to the whole show. Small sponsorships are very key. The affiliate marketing, there's also Patreon accounts. There's also branded paid content. So the Mike O'Mara Show, which is produced in our studios, has a Saturday show where they can use four letter words. And you pay a dollar for that show. So the whole week, every Monday through Friday is free, but then you can have one on the weekend that costs a dollar. Several mm -hmm. podcasts do that. Different forms of Patreon sponsorship. I support a couple shows with a dollar a month or so for their proprietary content. There's there's so many different ways to, yes. to monetize a podcast. Santana Moss Show, which is done out of our studios, he bootstrapped the whole thing for six months to make it completely professional and then he picked up Paisanos and now they're paying for everything. So there's a, there's a whole lot of different ways to get to sponsorship Absolutely. is I guess what I'm trying to say. You can self-sponsor which is something I believe firmly in because <laughs> yourself is always there yeah. uh, and you want it to sound like you have a sponsor right. too. Yeah. So I, I hope that answers some of your question. Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading I don't know, within the last year or so, somebody starting a podcast around cigars. Mm -hmm. And before he launched the podcast, he had gone to the cigar manufacturers, yeah. the Humidors, yeah. and had them sponsoring it before oh. they'd even launched. Yeah. Because wow. it was a very specific niche, right. Right. which is what you were referring Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Even this week, I shared with you as well that um, someone had actually done a fundathon yeah. and did Facebook yeah. Lives sure. uh, for the week sure. and raised several thousand dollars for their yeah. podcast. So. Yeah. There's a, no podcast, yeah, there's a podcast called Up and Vanished. It's a uh, crime story. And I think they made a lot of their money from having events from the, right. from the podcast. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah. events, yeah. Well, let's take another question. You guys have already answered the question on how you monetize, but how do you properly pitch smaller companies or companies in general or to be able to monetize? Or right. Is there a particular methodology that you guys use? I would have a little bit of the media kit, a little bit of a business plan to show them what you're going to do with it and how you're going to market it and build an audience so that people will listen to it. So I would start with that and then go and talk to people who you think would be potential sponsors. That's great. But understand that a lot of companies don't know what a podcast is. More and more are learning about it every day, especially oh, yeah. with Spotify and Pandora getting into the business. Mm -hmm. But it's still a fairly new concept to a lot of businesses. So you have to explain to them how many people could be listening to it, how you're going to promote it, how, what platforms you're going to be putting it on, and educate them as to the value of it. Instead of spending $500 for a little paper ad in a news magazine that somebody's going to throw away in a day, Explain to them how it's going to have a much broader reach with your podcast. Right. They want to see that ROI, right? Mm, so yeah. 
if you can articulate that. And then when you get to the huge numbers, there are formulas. My partner Oscar could tell you that the buys, when you're talking about many tens of thousands of downloads, then there is a formula for some of the bigger right. figures. It's yeah. kind of like what the radios do. I like to yeah. stay away from what the radios are doing, and I think <laughs> no, we need to create like our that. own thing. Yeah. But um, I think that if you start small and think locally, you'll have a better opportunity of finding well, you'll get local sponsors. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah, a absolutely. great point because in my first year of podcasting, I would go to conferences and you'd hear, you need 50,000 downloads a month mm. to receive any kind of revenue. Well, I just crossed like 200,000 yesterday, so I'm nowhere near <laughs> 50,000 a month, mm -hmm. right? Yeah but I've received tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorship revenue, yeah. even with the smaller numbers, because I niched in, and yeah. I'm able to articulate you know, who I'm serving, and the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the people looking to advertise can yeah. see that connection and, and understand the quality of people they have the potential to reach. Great example. And again, yeah. if, you, if part of your package for sponsorship is that you're gonna push it out in social media, and you're gonna push it out X number of times per week or per month or per year, it's not like they're paying for one thing, they're paying for ongoing yeah. marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. And as we wind down, let's say, speak to the person who maybe is apprehensive about, should I start a podcast, and give them your honest opinion, like sort of some words of encouragement to leave with them as we wind down. Do, uh, I would uh, speak with my co-author Hilda and say, don't think about it, just do it. Awesome. You know, record yourself in your car. I think my first official recording was with a micro recorder in my car because I knew that either the closet Greeting where I know Debbie it. uses <laughs> or in the car, in the I would have a closed environment and I would hear <laughs> it and boy, did I sound awful. But I would say just get your feet wet like anything gotcha. else, right? Just do it. Like, anything else just go awesome. ahead and do it and okay. have some drafts right. i love to call it episode zero just get it out of the way yep. and see what you think and listen to yourself coming out of a device yeah that changes things a little yep you know yep. Gotcha. so that's all all right yeah. and so 20 10 seconds ah. each of you I would, charlie took up all your time i would say the same thing <laughs> people are afraid to get behind the mic just start recording and then see where it goes right. gotcha. before the day's out i challenge everyone in the room to take a voice memo on your iphone oh. or your your device and record yourself. Do it for five minutes. You're not going to like the sound of your voice, <laughs> and you're not gonna like the very first episode you put, put out, but do it. Awesome. Get it done. Thank you, Charlie, Debbie, Stephen. Thank you guys you have been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. This concludes this episode of the Small Business Network. We're so grateful that you guys tuned in to us. Please be sure to join us again next month where we will have more content to help you start and grow your small business. Thank you so much for joining us.